This is Visitor's Book and I'm Maya, your host. In this program, we're going to be meeting with diplomats and foreigners who live here in Pakistan, and we're going to find out what they really think about the country. So let's go. Our guest today is the Polish ambassador, Piotr Opalinski, and we're here at the embassy, so let's go find him. Hello and Hello. welcome. Good morning. Thank you so much. So Thank nice you for meeting having you. me. You too. Let us have a seat in the garden in this beautiful sure. weather. Yeah, let's do that. Thank you. Such a beautiful embassy you have here. Oh, it's uh, my home sweet home also. Yeah. I spent 10 years in this embassy. Oh, wow. And 10 years in Pakistan. That's amazing. That's much, much longer than most diplomats actually get to in spend two, here. In two terms. Okay, and... First time I came here in 99 for six years assignment. Okay. And now I have this privilege and honor to serve as ambassador of Poland to Pakistan I as well see. for the last four years. Okay, that's incredible. And so, unlike most diplomats, you actually wanted to come here. Yes, yes, absolutely. It's, it's my first home, my choice. I have started with Oriental Studies years ago. Okay. So altogether it's uh, 30 years now being in uh, Central and South Asia okay. for me. Mm -hmm. And it's very rewarding, very pleasant, very beautiful to stay here to see how even how it is changing now the societies, uh, what is the response to global issues, regional, how uh, great development is. Let us have a seat, please. So, um, you first got here 1999, right? Right. How was the country back then? Like, what was your first impression of Pakistan when you first came here? When I came here already, I was an absolvent of uh, Oriental Studies in Tashkent Daulat University. Oh, wow. Nowadays, uh, the, oh, that's so this is the um, National University of Uzbekistan, the biggest one, wow. named after Ulughbek, Mirza Ulughbek. It is the astronomer who was same in same time as uh, Copernicus, uh, already um, famous in this part of the world for the heliocentric system as well, like Copernicus. Okay. There are many other links and, and um, beautiful stories which I could tell. <laughs> well, I started actually with my grandfather's library as a boy, small boy, uh, reading about, uh, about South Asia about Polish travelers also. Hmm. And uh, well, if uh, you start um, in this profession, Oriental studies brings you back uh, sooner or later to the most uh, beautiful area, which is Indian subcontinent. Exactly. Indo-Pak subcontinent, Central Asia as well. My Uzbek teachers were telling me to read Babur Nama, Babur's uh, role as a founder of Mughal Empire. So in some ways I was following the footsteps of Babur, coming wow. from Uzbekistan, Afghanistan to Pakistan also, then to India and also I served in, in Bangladesh. Okay. So when first uh, I asked for this assignment in Pakistan, I've been waiting for some time and uh, uh, I had also an opportunity to visit before it. Oh, okay. And I came here to this uh, Itwar Bazaar, Sunday Bazaar at that moment, where there were all things and people and stories which were just uh, part of my studies, you know, part of my life also. And you could finally see them. carpets, uh, Uzbek carpets, Turkmen carpets, wow. also people were speaking uh, a real Uzbek language without Russian uh, in influence on it. Of course, Urdu and uh, uh, other uh, like uh, Russian speaking guys also there, English. All the languages which was you know part of my studies and all the wonderful people so I thought this is my place in, in on earth you know which yeah. uh, where should I ask to, to be so you already felt at home yes. the first time you came and here. also this embassy located in such a beautiful place was very much encouraging to come with family yeah, yeah. because we came in with family at that time uh, there was my son and the daughter who was born in Bangladesh so I also I have a Bengali girl in my family okay. by birth. Wow. All these links, connections were already there. So yeah. I found this beautiful place and we had six wonderful years uh, seeing also beauty of Pakistan, mountains, places uh, from Peshawar, Karachi, Lahore, then also Hunza, Gilgit, Baltistan which is part of that story of Polish travel, yeah, which yeah, I can yeah. tell you later okay, as well. Okay, great. And 
you always knew you wanted to be a diplomat, is that no, right? No, not no? at all. Not at all, because my uh, reason to come for inter studies was, I would say, unpractical, not practical at all, because <laughs> we didn't think about jobs at that time. Exactly. As young people, I was uh, first uh, so much um, fascinated with the uh, with the Oriental culture mm -hmm. and philosophy in Polish, in Latin, there is a proverb which we also say in Poland, ex oriente lux, which means the lights coming from the East. Mm -hmm. And this light to me was, um, uh, well, uh, Zen Buddhism, I was most fascinated by Buddhism at that time as a young, as a young student. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, well, most likely the chances to have a job was just academic career, maybe as professor. Oh, I have also okay. diploma as a Russian uh, language teacher. But I was uh, somehow lucky that uh, this uh, diplomatic uh, assignment, I joined the Foreign Service in 85, opened the opportunity to come and live here, actually. Exactly. So, yeah. so the 30 years of living here is just um, half of my life not only as diplomat, but also as a yeah. student that I could like I could learn and enjoy the, the, the life, you know, the daily life uh, of uh, Uzbekistan, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, yeah. reading and uh, learning a lot. I'm still a student, I'm still learning. Yeah, lifelong student. That's yes. amazing. Yes. So having been to so many different countries in the region, I mean, Bangladesh, India, Uzbekistan, what makes Pakistan so special for you? What makes you call it your second home? There are wonderful people in each uh, country. Mm. It wouldn't be, uh, you know, um, giving just to, to say that there is only one. Yeah. But in Pakistan, I found my home for the longest while. It's been 10 years altogether. Yeah. So I feel like uh, I belong here also. Yeah. <laughs> wow, so you learned the language as well. Very good. And with this gap of many years, I, I was not following always the, the, the classes, but I'm trying to, to yeah. read especially the poetry. Poetry oh, wow. in Urdu, which is very That's difficult impressive. for a foreigner to translate. Yeah. But it's incredibly beautiful, sophisticated and kind. Mm. And also, we can we can talk about this later. Some of this is also translated into Polish. We have good Oriental studies in Poland as well. Mm -hmm. Warsaw University, Krakow University, and plus two others. They have also Urdu classes, uh, Hindi, Bengali, okay. uh, even Tamil and other languages as well. Farsi, of course, of course because yeah. my teachers were telling me Farsi is the lingua franca, French yes. language of the East. So the six years you spent posted here first, you were working as the deputy head of mission, yes. correct? Yeah. Uh, political officer also and the, and the consul. Okay. So in those years I had the, the chance to travel more, to see uh, places, even such uh, beautiful remote places like Karakoram, Highway, Hunza, Gilgit, Baltistan, yeah. which are now bringing me also to the very beginning of my first uh, first uh, story of Pakistan, which was um, uh, printed in Poland in the first half of the 20th century. This was the story of Polish traveler, mm -hmm. Captain Gromczewski, who came uh, from Pamir, Hindukush, Hunza, and uh, went to the uh, origins sources of Indus River. So wow. he wrote a very detailed description in Polish about this journey. And I had an opportunity to see it in my grandfather's library. So in some way, this is you know, how, how I attach uh, all the I stories, my, my being here and uh, the first story of Gromczewski. Poles were then, uh, during those years when Poland was non-existent on the political map of Europe, after partition for 120 uh, uh, three years there was no Poland but Polish travelers, Polish geographers, um, research workers, they were coming to these places mm -hmm. and uh, hence we have these uh, first stories of one Polish geographer who was in the service of, um, of uh, Chinese emperor came to the same Karakoram range and he made a measurement of all the mountains which is now uh, so precise that uh, K2, for instance, he made the mistake just by a few meters. Wow. But this is exactly like that. Amazing. Unfortunately, he perished in avalanche in that mm. time. So for many years, it was just in the Chinese archives in, in Beijing. Mm. And now we know uh, that uh, China in 2009 just uh, presented these documents in the UN. 
Okay. Uh, just uh, for you know geographical description of, of the border, which was already marked at that time. And our Gromczewski came 60 years later. His uh, travel was in uh, 1888-89. And uh, in this time, he was the captain in the service of Russian Tsar. Mm -hmm. So when the British uh, Francis, young husband, young husband, learned about this travel, he was trying to get rid of our, of our traveler. No way. But this is all descri described in this uh, beautiful uh, book. And uh, in some ways, I was following the footsteps also of Gromczewski. In Hunza, in, in the museum, there is um, the saber of, of, saber of Gromczewski still displaced, and the guide can, can pronounce his name correctly in Polish. Gromczewski was here. Incredible. At that time, the Mir of Hunza uh, requested uh, Gromczewski to pass this message to Russian Tsar for some kind of political protection against the British. Mm -hmm. It didn't change the history because the Brits sped up the occupation of, of Hunza even, even faster yeah. at that time. But huh. Poles were here, Poles were also in Afghanistan, uh, many uh, travelers were coming to Punjab also. So yeah. I'm just collecting the stories of, of those early contacts, but the most uh, of them uh, came in Pakistan after independence. Okay. How much do you get to interact with like regular Pakistanis actually as an ambassador? As much as possible because we are uh, working together and also uh, for the uh, development programs, for educational programs. I, I admire uh, great strong Pakistani human rights workers, mm -hmm. great brave ladies who are um, organizing uh, the NGOs, uh, fighting for the human rights, children's rights, women's rights. This is something which is very inspiring to me, also in spiritual terms. Okay, wow. So how much would you say Pakistan has changed as a country over the years that you've spent here? Within this uh, 15 years, when I was here first time and now, it's a lot of changes, lots mm. of development in infrastructure, our city Islamabad is much bigger now, with the exactly. huge uh, buildings around. Yeah. And uh, and this is uh, this is uh, wonderful. I believe that, and I I really am convinced for such great people who are working hard. Pakistanis deserve this development. Mm. So the country is uh, absolutely new to me. Here, when we are sitting, also the construction sites are around us. Yeah. Uh, there is. Uh, in, other embassies which are under construction in Bangladesh and also behind us there is I think the biggest uh, Afghanistan embassy also being is constructed it? right now wow. and uh, there are more diplomats uh, more more embassies represented in Pakistan as well hmm. because this is a very important country in this uh, juncture this uh, position between Central Asia South Asia and Middle East which makes it so important also so I believe that this will also bring lots of development to Pakistan with the Chinese-Pakistani economic corridor mm. as well now developing. So it's absolutely new country today. Is it? What about um, in terms of, let's say, uh, socially or culturally, have you seen many changes in the country over the years? I'm in love with Pakistan culture. I. Um, mm, I wish that it does not change also within the time passing by. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, when there were places uh, also back in, in, in Delhi, when I was on Yamuna River, they were telling me, see, there are new bridges, new things, new, new houses. I said, but where are the elephants? Yeah. Elephants were missing. <laughs> so to me, you know, this part of old, yeah. all this gold, exactly. this fortunately is not changing. Mm. The, same, the same culture is here. Yeah. We have uh, diversity. Uh, with my uh, background, Poland is a Catholic country. We have uh, uh, beautiful Catholic churches here. We have wonderful Sufi uh, culture, also mosques and music and poetry, which is also inspiring. Exactly. So this diversity is beautiful. And I'm sure it will remain as a special characteristic of Pakistan mm. culture. And how do you see the future of the country? The future, I believe, with this um, development of, uh, uh, of the economic corridor and, inshallah, peace in Afghanistan, the future should be bright. Because Pakistan, uh, Pakistan nation is uh, predominantly young. Yes. So for the young people, 
we pro if you provide them with education, jobs, it will be the great uh, uh, enhancement of, of the country itself. Mm. But this is also my wish, as, as uh, also belonging here, that in Pakistan, uh, Pakistan will be one of the most important countries in the next uh, de decades. Do you feel that Polish people have a lot of knowledge about Pakistan or is it a bit of a mystery? <laughs> the, the, the knowledge is now being increased not only by, by the universities and the uh, oriental uh, studies in hmm. Poland but also by people's to people's contacts because we have a growing number of Pakistanis now coming to Poland okay. and also Polish people visiting Visit. Pakistan. Hmm. So in my city Warsaw there are also halal restaurants providing cuisine from Punjab and Pakistan wow. as well. And the most uh, uh, interesting gift is now by the young Pakistani students who mm -hmm. play cricket. And Poland was predominantly football playing country yeah. and now it's also we have cricket. And uh, there are teams which are winning the TT20 for Central European Cup for Poland. And this is Pakistani team. Its name is Warsaw Kings. Wow. We have Warsaw Kings <laughs> in Poland. And that's uh, one of the, of the contributions. Hmm. Beauty of Pakistan culture, music, cuisine and cricket. So there's more and more like cultural contacts between the countries. That's amazing. And our connections between Polish and Pakistani people go back into the beginning of Pakistan statehood even uh -huh. earlier than that. So let's wow. talk about this now if I may invite you also to see the book on it. Yeah, I would love to see Thank that. You. Let's do that. It's time to take a short break. I'll see you when we come back. Welcome back. I'm here at the Polish Embassy with His Excellency and let's take a look around. So how did uh, so many tens of thousands of Poles end up in Pakistan during the Second World War? These were the refugees who could escape from the Soviet Union. They were people uh, resettled by the Stalin Soviets uh, from the eastern territories of Poland, mm -hmm. occupied by by the Soviets in 39, and uh, then shifted to Siberia. When we had the Anders Army, which was uh, coming uh, south, this Anders Army took care of many civilians as well. Mm -hmm. So here in Pakistan, there were more than 20,000 Polish refugees who could find the home and refuge in Karachi and Quetta also. How come Pakistan? That seems quite surprising, right? Well, they were coming through all the way uh, through Iran and also uh, British India at that time. But to us, what is most dear is the new home which was created for them in today's Pakistan mm -hmm. in the 40s. So that later also uh, Polish pilots who served in UK, in our Western uh, Army, uh, contributed to Pakistan with a special uh, 70 airmen group who came here and established Pakistan Air Force. Wow. The story is very not so well known. <laughs> exactly. But this was also the great page of our history which is uniting us Poles and Pakistanis mm. so much. Wow. Here we have also some of parts of our exhibition on those who were coming to Pakistan, Air Commodore Turovic, wow. his family and also a women who were training Pakistani cadets as well in gliding. The Polish pilots provided the maintenance and also participated in the combat operations as well. In 1949, uh, 65, I'm sure that their role was very significant. Yes. That's why also we see on the other picture the highest Pakistani military awards. They were awarded and some of them were granted honorary Pakistani citizenship as well. Is it? How, how many of these pilots ended All up? Altogether was more than 70. Airmen, pilots, uh, aviation engineers, technicians. Yeah. So that uh, is quite a significant group. Wow. Some of them, especially Air Commodore Turovic, he rose to this rank in Pakistan Air Force and later become very uh, supportive uh, for the Pakistan uh, super space program as yeah. well. Well, let's go take a look at some of these pictures. Thank you. So how did he, was he also part of the 
first group of refugees who ended up here? No, or did is, he come this later? This is uh, the next uh, refugees came here during the war and yeah. the pilot just after that. Oh, I see. So they were especially invited yes. in that, right? In Karachi Christian Cemetery, we have uh, more than 60 graves of those who were uh, uh, living here. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, Turovich family uh, continues to live in Pakistan, wow. married with Pakistani, so his yeah. grand granddaughters and grandsons are here. Mm. And like you said, they participated in like combat operations, they took part also, in, but, in but war. Also, but especially for the training and maintenance, which is okay. also very crucial, very yes. important. Yes, and they established some institutes here. Yes, and also right? established and also supported the establishment of Pakistan civil aviation as well. Mm. There are other uh, officers in the Navy, like uh, Captain Teminski, whose uh, special place is in, on Manora Island called Teminski village, wow. even till now. They were the hero of Second World War. Teminski was saving lives of Canadians, British, others during the war, mm. and then came here uh, to support the new Pakistani Navy. Wow, that is so interesting. I had no idea about this history between Poland and Pakistan. And yeah, here you can see them this is uh, the ladies, Mrs. Turovich and Mrs. Mikulska, who were also uh, very active in the uh, military service. Mm -hmm. And uh, even before the war, uh, our women also joined universities, technical university in Warsaw. Mrs. Turovich was uh, bringing aircraft escaping from uh, Germans in 39 mm -hmm. in Poland. They met also with her husband in UK where the Polish pilots had a very uh, great contribution saving the British uh, lands from the uh, Hitler's invasion. Wow. The famous battle for Britain was won entirely, mostly, by the Polish pilots. Mm. So we, our heroes then became heroes of Pakistan. They came here, they became Pakistani. And they stayed on for how long? I mean, some of them till, stayed... Till, till the 60s, till 70s, and yeah. uh, some of them as... Uh, I said to Rubbish family yeah. is still there. Still in there, yeah. And yeah, what was the idea? Like, why did the Pakistani government decide to invite specifically Polish? That pilots? was the invitation for those who were practically abandoned after the war. They could not okay. come back to Poland because oh, Poland yeah, became yeah, yeah. communist country, I see. and other uh, officers who were coming back were persecuted. Some mm. of them even killed. Okay. So that's why our pilots, all our soldiers, had to find new life somewhere else. Oh, so I see. here in Pakistan, they had this noble mission in their professional capacities. So that is uh, really wonderful. This story is now described in the several books by Pakistani and Polish wow. authors that I would like to tell you also yeah. about later on. We'll go take a look at it for sure. And what is this here? This is the first invitation? That's a commendation is letter by the President, Field okay. Marshal Mohammed Ayub Khan, oh, I see. for Air Commodore Turovic. Oh. Sometimes when I'm also visiting our uh, friends uh, in GHQ in Rawalpindi, I'm telling them that I'm just uh, I live here like in uh, Polish city because uh, Chaklala Air Base was commanded by Air Commodore Turovic and then next to uh, GHQ uh, there is also another Christian cemetery in which there is other uh, Polish pilot uh, buried, mm. uh, Captain Bana. His family also. I found uh, the traces, I found the documents, so now we are regaining the memory. This is very important mm. in my mission also as ambassador of Poland about our heroes in Pakistan. Incredible. And um, what do we have here then? This is... It's a document, permission for flight guiders for Mr. Mrs. Turovic as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, our ladies also were very active and uh, instrumental in the all uh, instructions. Uh, and also I remember um, we made a documentary in which uh, the retired Pakistani air commodores are remembering their Polish instructors, Polish pilots. Oh, and see. they call them brothers. Brothers, which in Muslim countries means, means a lot. Mm, because exactly. Polish uh, officers were living with them together, eating together, spending time together and passing very sincerely their great uh, knowledge and expertise on military uh, uh, air aviation to Pakistani uh, pilots. 
So then also uh, the establishment of Pakistan uh, civil aviation was uh, supported by the Polish uh, pilots. As you remember, it was one of the strongest uh, uh, air, airlines in the, in the region mm. after yeah, 47, yeah, yeah. 50 to 60s. Okay. These years also our heroes were there, so we are very proud of them. All right, should we go take a look at the books then? Yes, please. Yeah, so what are these books? They're written by Pakistani or yes, Polish? Yes, both Pakistani okay. and Polish author. First one is by Colonel Kazam Kadri, who was also a great historian and also military uh, officer himself. Okay. Uh, this is called Sentinels in the Sky. And uh, the great uh, chapter on Polish pilots in, in, his, in his book, Erkom Lorturowicz and also others um, with family, they are described here. And uh, if you have a look, this is also the story which is uh, now being described in Polish book, Freedom Under the Pakistani Sky by Miss Anna Pietraszek, who also uh, spent years in traveling in Pakistan, searching for the archives. We have been granted very generous access by Pakistan Air Force. And now also in Pakistan Air Force Museum in Karachi, there is one hall specially designed for Polish pilots. Oh, that's amazing. And isn't there like a memorial for yes. Polish pilots somewhere in Karachi Yes, there is a memorial well? also and um, lots of documents which are being published now. This book uh, I, we wish to um, also edit for the Pakistan uh, readers. Okay, so right because now the story it's was not. forgotten for many years. Yeah, and also, yeah, yeah. it's part of my mission just to yeah. revive the great memory of, of Polish course. heroes in Pakistan. Is this book available in Pakistan right now, or only in? Poland? I hope it will be. The first edition is now um, issued in Poland. Okay. In, at the on the anniversary of their arrival to Pakistan. Okay, that's fascinating. And this is. Um, oh, thank you. And um, so this is basically a book by, she's a, a traveler? Yes, yes. She was a, a traveler and also yes. the Himalayan climber, which opens yet another chapter of uh, great Polish-Pakistani interactions. Exactly. Because the Polish climbers could not come here during the communist times because mm -hmm. of difficulties of getting mm -hmm. passports, getting funds for the expeditions. So when they came here, all the peaks were already uh, conquered by others. Yeah, so, of course. So uh, we established a very special kind of uh, challenge uh, sport, which is uh, climbing the same peaks in the winter conditions or from the toughest part, hmm. in which also the Polish climbers excelled. They got their famous ice warriors quite recently also. Uh -huh. At the moment also there are several other Polish climbers mm. here in oh, Karakoram. Oh wow, that's incredible. And um, so we've talked a lot about these Polish pilots now, but of course um, during the Second World War all kinds of people came here from Poland. What did most of them end up doing here in Pakistan? Did they stay on? Did they like start working here in Pakistan? The initial contract was uh, just for a few years, but some of them uh, decided to stay over for a longer while mm -hmm. with families, especially Turovic family in Karachi. Um, Miss Anna, uh, daughter of Turovic, also married a Pakistani officer and uh, all the family is living in Karachi right now with the next generations, generations ahead. Yeah. And this is uh, also uh, well like now, right now true to our links in modern times in, in Poland as well. We have, uh, as we just mentioned, you know, the Polish-Pakistani cuisine, Polish-Pakistani marriages as exactly. well. Mm. And this is uh, the, the, the beauty of this relationship mm. that we do understand and, and uh, like each other uh, for some probably special character features. Mm. We are both both brave nations yeah. and uh, very romantic. <laughs> and uh, I think with the geopolitical position of a smaller country vis-a-vis -vis, uh, some uh, empires, uh, we also excelled in uh, defense. Yeah. This also brings us to another 
That's area of, of uh, cooperation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, this is what is uh, uniting us. Yeah, that's right. And there are still some descendants of these Poles who first came here as refugees, right? There are some, like, there, I think there is a, a poet of Polish descendant. Yeah. Yes, yes, there is, there is uh, one family, but most of the refugees were then resettled to other countries, okay. Australia, mm. uh, United States, uh, Canada. Oh, uh, most of them could not come back to, to mm -hmm. Poland in mm -hmm. those years. No. But they found a great home and refuge and they were taken care of by Pakistani brothers and sisters in such wonderful way that it should be remembered. Yeah. Have you yourself met any of these people here in Pakistan, these descendants? As I said, just, just two families uh, are now mm. in Karachi and also Lahore, but we take care of all the memorial sites of Poland, all okay. the, the Christian cemeteries, mm. for which I'm very grateful to uh, Pakistanis that they are very well preserved. You know, no city development is not uh, damaging these sites of uh, national memory. To us, it's very important as well. And you found one uh, Christian cemetery here in Rawalpindi as well, where there are some springs. Yes, the, the most of the memorial sites for Poland are in Karachi, mm -hmm. uh, where there is uh, 65 um, Polish graves, for which also under honorary consul and the embassy takes care. Okay. But here in Rawalpindi, for years, it was not known. Mm. We have found in, uh, in the archives that uh, those pilots who have been here near to Chaklara base or maybe some other um, uh, airports, they could be also buried here. And from the, um, the register of the Christian cemetery, I found the Polish name. So it wow. was, it was uh, great uh, for me, for as ambassador of Poland, that I could uh, find and pay respect to one of our heroes. Uh, we, in our tradition, we revere our, our forefathers and uh, in, on the, always on the 1st of November, there is a special uh, ceremony to pray, 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 light candles and uh, lay flowers on the graves. And as I say, we are very grateful to Pakistanis because our culture is, is the same. Mm -hmm. This respect for those who passed away and uh, prayers for them is also part of our culture. So here, this preservation of Polish National uh, Remembrance Site is uh, very dear to me. Mm. So you got to visit those graves yes, actually yes. on that day. Always on the 1st of November, we have a special service. Memorial oh, that's service amazing. That. Wow. Shall we now move to the residence for some tea, coffee and uh, Polish snacks? Excellent. Thank you so much. We're going to take a short break. I'll see you in a little while. Welcome back. I'm here in conversation with the Polish ambassador. So, Mr. Ambassador, we were just talking about some Polish mountaineers who've been coming to Pakistan, but do you think there is potential for Pakistan becoming a more popular tourist destination? Oh yes, I'm, I'm sure so. We are also contributing to it. Maybe you remember the Polish blogger Eva Zubek, who made uh, herself very famous here yeah. with her beautiful films from the yeah. mountains and also elsewhere from the cities like Lahore, old city Lahore, even Rawalpindi here, mm. Karachi. You know, there is, there is a great beauty of uh, people living here, with their great cuisine, their culture, Sufi music. All this is, you know, part of this beauty. So I'm sure that uh, Pakistan deserves and will get much more tourists in the years to come. Mm. Do you think, I mean, are there already increasing numbers of tourists coming from Poland or is that still yes, something yes, that already, needs to... already there are. Okay. And, uh, but dominantly uh, the climbers, because yeah. uh, right now it's also the winter time and mm. they are now in uh, Karakoram range and also uh, near to Hunza. There are two teams at the moment, so okay. every, every winter we have. And also we are waiting how this uh, K2 climbing will go uh, now, mm. because this year there is yet another international uh, team okay. over there. Mm. But this also brings a lot of uh, lots of good news and, and uh, information about Pakistan. Of People course. are very happy to be here. They enjoy very much the culture. You can see also those 
bloggers who say, I came here, these people are so, hospitality is so wonderful, that I didn't even uh, spend money because everybody was hosting me, you know, this yeah. is part of great Pakistani hospitality, yeah. great culture. Exactly. And you already mentioned that you have this love for uh, Urdu poetry. Where did that come from? And who are some of your favorite poets? For the poetry, I started studying uh, now when I'm in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Before it was uh, just a general knowledge about Urdu, but some of uh, great Pakistani poets have been already translated into Polish. Is it? Wow. Especially Mirza Khaleb, okay. Alama Iqbal, Mirta Kimir, or Ahmed Faiz also. So, so these, are, these are the best known names, especially in universities. But um, we are right now also translating yet another uh, poetry of Alama Iqbal because of, because of this, its significance as well. Okay. So the language which is so rich, so deep, meaningful, this is special characteristics of this poetry and its beauty. Beautiful visions. Yeah. of love, friendship, exactly. compassion. And that's what you like to still do in your free time, read Urdu poetry, is that right? Yes, right now I'm also reading Alamba Iqbal for the special reason that we said about Polish pilots, that yeah. story, documentary on Polish pilots had also some uh, musical and poetic part of it. In, in, in one scene, uh, the young Pakistani female cadets are reciting Sitaron Saage, Jan or Bihen. I would like to read it out for, for the viewers today also. If oh, you please. Me. May I now? Yes, sure. It's translated into Polish. Ponad gwiazdami są też inne światy. Sytarą se agie dzian orbihe. Sytarą se agie dzian orbihe. Abi iszke im tihan or behave. Sitaram se age jahan or behave. Tehi is in the gise nahie fazayen. Tehi is in the gise nahie fazayen. Yahan se karon caravan or behave. Sitaram se age jahan or behave. Kanat nakar alam rango bupar. Jaman or be ashian or behave. Sitaram se agye jahan or bihe. Agar khoga ya ek nasheman to kya ham? Agar khoga ya ek nasheman to kya ham? Makama teaho fahan or bihe. Sitaram se agye jahan or bihe. Tu shahin he, parvaz he kam tera. Teresamne asman or bihe. Sitaram se agye jahan or bihe. Isi rozo shab me ulachkar narahja. Isi rozo me isi rozo shab me ulachkar narahja ke tere zaman aur makan aur bihe. Sitaram se agye jahan aur bihe. Geye din ke tanhatha me anjuman me. Geye din ke tanhatha me anjuman me. Yahan ab mere razdan aur bhi hai. Abhi ishke imtihan aur bhi hai. Sitaram se aage jahan aur bhi hai. Wow, that's very impressive. <laughs> I'm sure you're probably the only ambassador who is capable of doing that. I'm not the only one. <laughs> oh yeah? Uh, quite uh, two years back, there were three ambassadors speaking Urdu. Oh, really? And also we were trying to make a Mushaira competition on PTV. No way. <laughs> Unfortunately, they left. I was the only one. So there is not much okay. incentive to show just, just one. But there are uh, many uh, about, uh, among the diplomats, many people who are fascinated with the language, with culture, and they learn it. And also they keep coming back mm. in different capacities. Like I have been here as a counselor, now as ambassador. Exactly. Chinese ambassador speaking very well Urdu as well. Yeah. Former German ambassador as well. So. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yes. So, um, and it's not only poetry that you're interested in, also music. Yes, yes. Our embassy um, makes uh, the series of concerts which goes under the uh, one caption, one name, uh, 
Poland, Pakistan, Music Without Borders. And uh, this is a very special uh, kind of uh, uh, music, which is just the jugal bandi between the two. So mixing two, two cultures. Uh, like uh, recently, last year also, there were Polish um, musicians who, who um, make a folk music, they sing and, and uh, play it, uh, together with uh, Pakistani Sufi music or with Pakistani uh, popular music as well. Even, even the uh, text, uh, text was also very much uh, matching because when Polish musician um, was singing about love, the Pakistani was singing about Ishq Muhabbat Ke Barame. But, but uh, matching this culture is much deeper than that because music, like the famous saying by Tagore says, uh, that music is such a language which needs no translation. So really it is no borders. And what is, what is really wonderful, what we had here in Pakistan, in uh, Islamabad, Lahore, they were going with concerts, you know, this very lively, uh, emotional response by the audience. Yeah. Audience which sings with you, dances. Exactly. This is beautiful. Yeah, and the Polish musicians must have been really excited to see that oh, in yes, Pakistan. Oh, yes. Yeah. And so they want to energy, come back. Beautiful energy yeah. was at these concerts. <laughs> Amazing. And that must have made Pakistan more well known in Poland as well then. Yes. Then the, the um, Kawali musicians also visited Poland several oh, times. Yeah? Is so it? there were a series of concerts in biggest cities in Poland as well. Incredible. And you know, we always remember, um, uh, like Ustad uh, Nusrat Ali Fateh Ali Khan, because uh, this is uh, universal and uh, exceeds all times. Uh, there is a saying that when Nusrat uh, Ali Khan sings, the indo pak border melts also, because yeah. the same wonderful culture spreads both sides of Punjab, both sides of subcontinent. And more than that, because the audience is much bigger now. It's mm. also the Middle East, it's also Europe, UK, America, Canada, where the viewers and listeners are there. Exactly. Great. So aside from these um, cultural things that you are promoting here at the embassy, what does Poland focus on in Pakistan? The foreign relations are based especially on the economic cooperation. That's must, much more, must, most important part of the relations, which brings also the other political and other interests. So here in Pakistan, uh, we are very successfully developing the trade and commerce, especially in the last two years, where we have already exceeded twice uh, the volume of uh, half a billion euro, mm -hmm. which is uh, quite significant for countries at such a distance and size of economy, but we are not satisfied with it yet because there are mm. many other uh, opportunities not untapped so far. We could divert, diversify especially our uh, trade because um, on side of Pakistan is dominated by textiles, which yes. is true also in of other uh, European countries America. 90% is textiles, garments, great products of good quality, uh, Pakistani leather jackets are also very fashionable. Oh, really? And uh, in uh, smaller quantity also rice, uh, basmati rice, very okay. famous, hmm. and uh, surgical instruments. Yeah. So um, on Polish side, it's uh, not just a simple trade, but also services. Hmm. And uh, most uh, interestingly uh, now, the IT technology allows us also to, to make some more Mm, contribution like um, for instance Polish company was uh, one of those who was uh, searching the flow of uh, mobile data in Pakistan okay. uh, uh, mobile uh, connections uh, network maybe for the future uh, uh, consideration of 5g which is going to come uh, in, in our economies and uh, Poland was also providing this electronic chip which is in the Pakistani passport oh, wow. on the really? personal side of huh. it. So these two things are, are uh, different from the, the traditional export. Traditionally it was uh, the coke, I mean the coal coke which is uh, uh, applied for the power stations. Uh, there are some chemical products, machinery. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is uh, very encouraging that we now cross to this uh, modern uh, kind of exchange. This is very important yeah, also. Yeah. Okay. And um, is there any cooperation in defense still? Yes, Pakistan is uh, looking for non-traditional partners and uh, Poland is, is one of them. 
I'm sure that uh, our industries are very much um, uh, compa uh, 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 comparable in terms of, uh, of um, technologies and industries which were both uh, traditional, like uh, we had crossed from the um, Soviet uh, era of, uh, of industry into the NATO equipment, so we can make uh, all kind of standards, uh, electronics, other standards which are very much uh, in need. And also uh, we had many great visits and exchange between the two military, uh, starting from the great story of Polish pilots, which is opening hearts and minds. And, and we are very grateful that Pakistan um, Air Force have participated in the Polish centenary of Polish aviation by sending their aircraft to the Polish air show. So the first uh, JF-17 was uh, first time flying in Poland and also giving more information, more fame about Pakistan. So was the Navy as well. And uh, this cooperation is very friendly always. Uh, we are not uh, focused on the military only. We have also um, the great 20 years of experience actually by Polish oil and gas company operating now in Pakistan. Wow, okay. And uh, already they have um, uh, been successful in the Sindh province, where they already supply gas from several wells to, to the local network. And this company also announced that they would like to triple their, and their um, investment in Pakistan, which is also a time of uh, very much uh, big demand also as well for Pakistan's growing economy, energy resources. These are the two major uh, uh, areas, but of course we wish to come into the food processing industry with our technologies as well, because here Punjab is great, great agriculture which needs also processing, and uh, probably in the coal uh, industry as well. Okay, so I think it's quite evident that you really love it here in Pakistan, and you've mentioned that you would love to stay on here even after your ambassador post finishes. What would you like to do here? Well, as a retired diplomat can serve either in consultancy or any academic, preferably, preferably academic activity because for all my long 30 years plus career I've been just a writer, so I was writing analysis and, and research, so I think this area is most likely, although of course I wish to enjoy you know, the music and poetry and any other area which Hopefully, I can get also in, in Pakistan beautiful mountains to see because some uh, travelers were not uh, uh, were delayed. So on retirement, everything is possible, I believe, inshallah. So then why not come back to the country which you love and among the people whom you love also? This is my dream. And dreams come true if you work for them. Yeah, that's very true. Okay, time for our rapid fire round. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Shalwar kameez or suit? Shalwar kameez. Great. Lahore or Karachi? Lahore. Okay. Alama Iqbal or Faz Ahmed Fez? Difficult choice. Okay, both. Both, <laughs> yes. All right. Velichka salt mines or Kevra salt mines? Velichka, even in Kura they say the same. Velichka is number one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Please come and visit. I'll try. <laughs> Chittagong Hill Tracks or Margala Hills? Margala Hills. Wow. The first thought that comes to your mind when I say Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan? Ishq Mahabbat. Great. Truck art. Truck art, yes. Yes. Wonderful. Great. Um, Sufi music. Sufi music. It's indescribable in words. Northern Pakistan. Yes. <laughs> Let's go then. <laughs> Let's. Your favorite word in Urdu? Well, it will be the same. Ishq, muhabbat. Ishq, muhabbat. Great. Beautiful one. The best thing about Pakistan? It's people. Wonderful people. Great. Okay, then it's time for you to sign our visitor's book. you wrote.
Many thanks for having me on your great program and giving me an opportunity to express my views and feelings about this beautiful country, Poland, Pakistan, Dosti, Zindabad. Thank you. Thank you about Shukriya, Bari Mehrbani. Thank you so much, Shukriya. That's it for today. Please join me again next week and don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts at indus.news. Goodbye.